Thanks for joining us for today's message. If you'd like to support this resource and others like it, you can do so by visiting our website, thechapel.cc, and select the giving option that works best for you. Enjoy the message.
get to sing for joy in your presence today. That we can count it all joy, just like Jesus, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you sent your son Jesus, and when we believe in him, you see us as pure and blameless. There's no one like you, God. There's no other name worthy of praise. So church, let's join with heaven singing holy. worship you this morning. You know what I want us to do for a minute is you know there's so many things that are going on in the world around us. Can I get an amen right there, right? Yeah, but there's also a lot of things going on inside of us. There's things that are going on around us. There's things that are, that are going on inside of us. And then there's things that are going on around our immediate community and our immediate families. And I was reading as preparing for, the, for this week's message and for our weekend experience here in the worship center, I was reading in Luke chapter 4, and there's this story where um, Jesus has just kind of shown up on the scene publicly. And he's chosen some of the disciples, not, but not all of them. And there's a man with leprosy who comes to Jesus and he says, listen, if you desire, if you want, if you will for me to be healed, just say it. And Jesus answers, yes, I do want it. Be whole. Be healed in some translations. Yes, I do want it. But in one word, in one phrase, what was a mountain to this person, what was this incredible circumstance that he could not see to overcome, in one word, Jesus changes it all. In one word. And I thought, man, I would love to just sometimes forget about the problems in my own life, in our own community, in our own country, in the world. I would love that. But then I felt like the Lord say, why would you do that? That's a chance for me to show up and in one word, I can change it all. In one word, I can change it all. 
sometimes, and then right after that, right after that, there's this story where Jesus is with the disciples in the boat. And of course, what happens? There's a storm, and Jesus goes calm. The wind and the waves obey him. The disciples, when they saw that the leper was healed, their thought wasn't, wow. Their thought wasn't, man, bring all the sick. They actually said, look at the authority of this man. Look at the authority of this God. Look at the authority. Maybe we shouldn't forget about all the things that are going on in our life and in our community and in our country and in the world so that we can pray so that all the Lord has to do is say one word and everything be changed. Because he still is the God who holds the universe in his palm who sets the sun to rise and the moon to go above the earth. He is still the Lord in one word that makes the lily of the field sway in the winds that he commands. He still is the God that by one word, things can change. He is still the God who has authority above all else and everything else, regardless of what I feel and regardless of what I see. He is the one who holds the complete authority to do whatever he wants, through whom, whoever he chooses, how he wants, when he wants, and when it gets done. That's what makes him God. So during this next song, let's give me a new song for the church. Where do we, I don't feel like me, but I need God to show up. I need God to show up somewhere in my life. As we sing this song, let it be a declaration for you. Let it be a declaration for you. That he still calms the winds. He still steals the storms. That no matter what circumstance you're in, that you're watching, that you hear about, or that's around you, or the storm going on inside of you, let's cry out for just one word from God. Let it be a declaration, this song. And then you sing, believing that just by one word, the one who holds the entire earth in his fingertips can change lives, worlds, countries, circumstances by his authority because he is God, he is the Lord, he's your father and we're his sons and daughters. Let's sing church. spoken to the void the breath that brought the dust to life and sang the stars to
God's house today, man. We're so glad that you're here. Why don't you take a moment to turn and welcome your neighbor, and then we're going to take a look at the screens together. family, it's Lily here. Thank you for joining us. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to be right here. If it's your first time joining us, welcome to the Chapel family. We want to get to know you and even pray for you. So go grab a connect card from the seat back in front of you, fill it out, and after service, drop it in the giving box on your way out. At the chapel, we choose to dedicate our first to God and lean in together. Join us for our first Wednesday service in the worship center on Wednesday, March 2nd at 7 p.m. We'll have an extended time of worship, prayer, and an encouraging message that you don't wanna miss. It's baptism weekend, and it is not too late to be baptized. We'll provide everything, a change of clothes and a towel. Water baptism is an opportunity for you to show the world that you have made a decision to follow Jesus. We like to say it's an outward expression of a change that's happened on the inside. Baptisms will be in front of the chapel immediately following the Saturday 6 p.m. service and Sunday 11 a.m. service. There is no registration required. Just show up and sign in. And if it's not your day to be baptized, still come by and celebrate today with those taking this big step. Well, that's all I have for you this weekend. Thank you again for joining us. Let's get ready for a powerful message. All right, Sunday. Su Let me do it again. Let me do it again because I'm very, very insecure. I'm going to make believe this for the first time. Sunday. Gosh, what you got to do to wake you up? You're supposed to be more spiritual. You're here first. Listen, we start a new series, and you know I get stoked out of my mind when we talk about starting a new series because we're really going to learn some. We're really going to learn some great stuff. Now, listen. Here's the idea. Series is called Hooked, right? Tackling temptation because who's been tempted to do something this week that you should not have done? Go ahead, raise your hand. Go ahead. The rest of you are just liars. Here's the idea. This, it's hooked because we get hooked sometimes by temptation. That's what happens. We get hooked sometimes. Well, careful, careful. I'll take, listen, I'll take an eye out. I don't care. Listen, let it come back. Let it come back. Where is it? Where is it? Let's see. Here it is. Listen, a lot of times what happens is we'll just literally get tempted to be something or do something. Here, right here. Right there. How far back? It'll hit you right in the head. If you get hit in the head, we'd ask you to go and go to another church. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Let it go. Got to pass it up. Pass it up. Go up. Pass it up. That's okay. That's all right. Fine. Look. See what happens? Look. Look. So you get a little hooked. Get a little hooked. No, no. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Just give it. Just, just pass it up front. All right. I'm done playing. Pass it up front. All right. Come on. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Don't. Everybody's like, don't let it hit my hair. Don't hit my hair. I've got my Sunday's best. Careful. Careful. I'll pull that toupee right. I mean, uh, I'll pull that right. Just kidding. There you go. There you go. There you go. The idea is what, what would it be like? What would it be? Because the whole point that the enemy does, the whole idea that the enemy does is to actually just throw some bait your way. It's to throw some bait your way to see if you'll get hooked. Right? That's the idea. Right, did it hit anybody? That's the whole idea, is that some bait will go by in your life and that you'll grab the bait and be hooked. And we know, don't, don't worry about it, pull your head right out. Just, just go ahead, toss it up front. Is it? It's not catch, it's not. The whole idea, what happens if we treated temptation like we did this? You throw this out into the worship server, everybody's like, ah. I don't get anywhere near that. But what happens if we treated, as believers and followers, if we treated temptation like that? Because the whole idea is that the enemy 
will throw some bait. And regardless of what the bait looks like, there's always a hook. Regardless of what the bait looks like is there's always a hook. What would happen if we treated temptation like it could hurt us if we grabbed it? It could knock us down if it hooked us. For the next couple of weeks, what we're going to talk about is tackling temptation. What would it be like? What would it be like to actually be, because it's a fishing term, what would it be like to be the one that got away? What would it be like to be the believer and follower? Because here's the idea, we're all tempted. And if you've not been tempted in an area with your behavior or your speech, well, then you're prideful. Because the reality is we're all tempted according to Scripture. But what would it be like to be the one that got away? What would it be like, sure, to see the bait, but to know that there was a hook in the bait? So for the next couple of weeks, what would it be like to be the one that got away? And this week, all I want to do is lay a foundation, is lay a foundation for temptation. What I have found, maybe being tempted in areas that are unlike the areas you're tempted in. What I have found is the areas that you're tempted in, I may not be tempted in. What I have found is regardless of what the temptation looks like, regardless of what the bait looks like, temptation works the same way for you and me. Temptation works exactly the same way. Oh, it may look different. It may be shaped different. The color might be different. But it's the same pattern over and over again. So, so just the first week, we have to know and have an understanding, a biblical understanding of how temptation works. Why is it that so many people are getting hooked? Why is it that so many people are getting fooled by the same bait? Why is it that over and over, regardless of what we're tempted with, it pulls us away and attracts us at such a strength level that we miss God's best? So for a few minutes, it's going to be, listen... It's just the foundation. the foundation. The foundation dictates what's built on it. And we're going to get a biblical understanding. Because if you're like me, I grew up, the temptation, man, it was defined real different for me growing up. It just wasn't defined biblically. Here's what we have to understand. Temptation is not sin. It's only sin when we give in. Temptation is not sin. It's only sin when we give in. I, I grew up going, if you had that thought... If you think like that, you're going to go to hell. How can you think like that? How can you think of that thing? Her. How could you think of her though? How could you see? How could you want? It was like, it was just even if you thought it, you were doomed. So then you just gave in because you were doomed just with the thought. Now you know why I'm in counseling. Right. Yeah, I mean, temptation, I want to clear it up. Temptation is not sin. It's only sin when you give in. Why? Because the Bible is clear. For our high priest, Jesus, is able to understand our weaknesses. He was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. Temptation is not sin. It's only sin when we give in. We're constantly tempted. And so what we have to understand is that regardless of what the temptation looks like, the pattern is the same for you and me. It doesn't matter what age you are. doesn't matter what season of life you're in. The pattern is the same. So let's discover the pattern of how we are tempted by the enemy since we're all tempted. And the last time I looked... We all a bunch of sinners. 
all of us, all of us, except that section right there, you guys are unbelievable. Yeah, all of us. <laughs> That's a lie. But listen, we're all, right? What's the pattern? Here we go. You ready? Lean in. Here we go. Ready? Lean in. Here it is. Each person is tempted when they, each person is tempted when, each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. The bait comes by and we're like, oh, well, that looks good. I like that. But it's interesting, the words of the scripture. The words of the scripture aren't desire. It's evil desire. We're tempted when we're dragged away by evil desire. Why is that? Because desire, see, that's where the whole thing starts. Temptation starts with a desire in me. It starts with some sort of desire. But the scriptures say evil desire. The scriptures say it's evil desire. But don't we have desires that are good? Here's the idea. Desires can be bad, sure. Revenge, lust, gossip, envy. I've got this desire to tell everybody what's happening with that person. So tell me so that I can pray. Tell me. Tell me a little bit more so I can pray specifically. Don't tell me everything, though. That's for God. Just tell me a little bit more so I could intercede. All right. Yeah. It, it, oh, uh, I have a desire to let everybody know what I think. Hashtag social media. I have this desire. Lust could be sexually. Lust could be just for a way of life. It's an insatiable appetite. Envy. You forget how good God has been to you because you're looking over the other side of the fence to what someone else has. Envy. All right. D these desires can be bad, but what I have found is desires can be good. There's nothing wrong with the desire to be loved. There's nothing wrong with that desire. Can I get an amen for the desire of hunger? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with a good, healthy Italian appetite. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be accepted or included. There's nothing wrong with wanting to, this desire to be told you did a good job or you're gifted or you're talented. There's nothing wrong with those desires. So what does the Bible mean by the temptation begins when? Temptation happens when? Temptation happens when we are dragged away and enticed by our own evil desires. Well, we know what evil desires are. Here's the thing. Good desires. When we look to fulfill a good desire outside of God's design. When we look to fulfill a good desire outside of God's design and outside of God's timing. All of a sudden, good desires become evil desires. Not every desire is bad, but does it line up with how we're created? Does it line up with what God said? So you see, when the Bible says, well, Sin begins, sin starts, sin happens. Temptation, it all begins with a temptation of a desire that happens in me. An evil desire. Good desires, sure. But good desires, when we look to fulfill them outside of God's design and his timing, the good desires become evil. And what the word says, and here's the pattern, it starts, one, with a desire, an evil desire in me. And then the second step. Ready? The second step. You got to go back to the first temptation. You got to go back to the very first temptation. Adam and Eve are in the garden. God creates man. He takes some dirt, blows into it. There's the man. All of a sudden, 
God says the first thing that's bad in the Bible is for man to be alone. And he says, so we're going to create woman. And he doesn't, there's a woman. It says that he fashioned her. And anybody who's been married longer than 14 months knows it can be a little complicated. <laughs> There's your reason. We, that's how it started with us. With the ladies, took a little time. Took a little time. Another reason why I don't do marriage counseling. You gotta go back to the first temptation. Here's the groundwork. This is my heart as your pastor is so that you know the pattern. If you know the pattern, we already know there's a hook in every bait. I want you to be the one that got away. Here God says, it's the garden. It's so good. You can have everything in it. Rule and reign. Name the animals. You, Adam and Eve. Fantastic. This is incredible. It's yours. Have at it. Oh. Hey, there's one thing though. There's a little tree in the corner. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't just, but look at everything else. Look at this. Just don't go by the tree. Don't go, don't touch the tree. Don't eat anything from the tree. And wouldn't you know, back then, not today, back then, the minute God says that, you know Adam and Eve went, what tree? What tree? What tree was that? The tree and I can hardly see it. You think he means that tree? Yeah. God says, look, you have, here's, wait, let me, let me just entice you a little bit. Let me tempt you with week two. Any time that you see God as a taker instead of a giver, get ready because the bait has some hook, then you're getting ready to be hooked. Any time that you see God as a taker instead of a giver, that's week two. All right, so here it is. We're back in the garden, and all of a sudden, Well, this is what happens. He said to the woman, did God really say? Here's the serpent. <laughs> the enemy goes, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Really? Did he really say that? Did he? The woman said, well, to the serpent, well, yeah, I mean, you, you, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Oh, well then, <laughs> you won't certainly die. You won't certainly die. Uh, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. There's a pattern there. That regardless of the bait, regardless of the content, regardless of your season of life or where you grew up or your socioeconomic background or the color of your skin, there's a pattern in the first temptation that has not changed in thousands of years. It's the same pattern that happens today. The good news is that our spiritual enemy has no new tactics. The bad news is we keep getting involved in the pattern. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his resurrection. Thank God for his body, his body beaten and his blood shed. Can I get an amen for his forgiveness and grace? Yes. But a lot of times we have to live with the calamity and the consequences. And that's not the life Christ died for. Starts with my desire and then in the first temptation, here we go, you ready? Then it goes to doubt. From desire, it goes to doubt. Here's what the enemy says. Did he say, did God really say? Did, did God really say? Did God really say that regardless of what you see, if you still make Christ the center of your home, those in your home will not fall away from the word of God? Did he really say that? Did he? Did he really say that what you put first in your life, first part of your day, first part of your time, 
first part of your resources, first part of your giving of anything. Did God really say when you seek him first, all the other desires of your heart will be fulfilled? Did he really say that? Because it's been some time and you... Did he really say that? Did he really say that there is a specific design for the family of God? Did he? I mean, because you know that book is so out of date. Did he? See, it goes from a desire in me and the evil desire in me, it goes to doubt. It's a pattern. It's a doubt. Did God really say you must not eat from the tree of the garden? Come on. Are you sure you heard him right? It starts with doubt. It's a doubt in God's authority. It's a doubt in God's word, which is his voice. It's a doubt in God's design. It's a doubt, and I'm telling you right now, never before in my lifetime, and I know it's hard to believe because I know I look 26. It's never before in my lifetime have I seen more people deceived, and it starts with doubting what real truth is. And let's be clear. For the believer and follower of Christ, absolute truth is his word, which is his voice for those who believe. But it begins with a doubt, is it? If she loved you, she wouldn't treat you like that. Really? Really? Doubt? Hmm. I don't know. She says she loves you, but... See, it starts with a doubt. It starts with an evil desire in me, and then it moves to doubt. And then what happens is it leads to deception. You will not surely die. You won't surely. You, listen, that's not true. It's, did he really say it? Come on. And then listen, even if he did say it, even if God did say it, it's not true. You won't, I mean, there's only two of you. Why would he kill one of you? I mean, come on. You won't surely die. He's a good God. He's God of love. Adam, you may die, but I mean, Eve, he fashioned you. I mean, did really? I mean, will you certainly die? See here in the deception step, there's a lie that gets inserted. You deserve, you deserve a better husband than that. You do work hard. You deserve a woman who's going to take care of herself all the time show up from work. She should be looking like a model out of Maxim magazine. If not, it's just, it's just, there's this lie that gets inserted. There's this lie in the deception phase. There's this lie. It goes from a desire, an evil desire in me, to me start doubting God's voice, which is his word. He brings doubt into the validity of the word of God. Did he really say? And, and then there's this deception. You won't die. I mean, you won't. Same thing over and over. Same thing over and over. And then it goes like this. We have to remember, I, this is so important, that behind every sin I commit is a lie that I believe. Behind every single time I do something that I'm not designed to say, or I'm not created to do is a lie that I believe. Because I believe if I do this, I'll be more fulfilled. I believe if I do this, I'll have more happiness. I believe if I do this, I'll be more fulfilled. I believe if I say this, it'll make me feel better. I believe if I say, and it may last for a little bit. Why is it so quiet in here this morning? It starts with an evil desire in me, and then it moves to doubting. This pattern of temptation moves to this, this doubting of God's word. And then there's this lie that gets inserted. It's deception. And then there is a detour. This is where you and I become hooked. This is where you and I become hooked right here. Because up until now, all we've been doing is looking at the bait. That's pretty, that's pretty good. I mean, I like, I like what they're saying. I like what they say. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. But right here is where we're hooked. I like to call it a detour. It's a detour. Why? Because for God knows that when you eat it, eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. Knowing good and evil. 
What's interesting is the scripture says, of course seek wisdom. Of course, as a matter of fact, to the believer and follower, the scriptures say, wisdom is so important, do everything you can to get wisdom. The Bible says, knowledge is so important that my people perish because they don't have knowledge. But what happens with a detour when we're tempted is to get something that God has for us. Listen to me. To get something that God has for us quicker and in a way that God has not created. That was not the time for them to get wisdom. That was not the time for them to get knowledge. That is not the way they were supposed to get wisdom. That is not the way they were supposed to get knowledge. But what the enemy does is, oh, you want love. You want love. You got to, I mean, you deserve to be loved. Starts with a good desire. But the, becomes, the good desire becomes the evil desire when we go to get it outside of God's design and outside of God's time. Oh, you get love. You, I mean, everybody wants to be loved. You deserve to be loved. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know if God really said not to have sex before marriage. I don't know. I mean, did he really say that? I mean, because you could have it right now. <laughs> it's the detour. And all of a sudden, we're hooked. It's the same pattern over and over again. Hey, let me, let me entice you for week two. Some of us know the story. Jesus becomes water baptized at the age of 30. That's why if you're following Christ and you have not been water baptized to, where, to the point to where you know what it really means, it's your weekend to be water baptized. That's your next step. After being water baptized by John the Baptist at the age 30, Jesus gets taken to the desert. And Jesus is tempted. And what's the first thing that our spiritual enemy tells Jesus? If, if you are the son of God. What is that? Doubt. It's the same pattern over and over again. Starts with an evil desire in me. And then it moves to like these other steps. Oh, it looks different for everybody, but it's the same pattern. And in every bait is a hook to drag you away from the life that God has intended. What we know is that no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. This is setting up the rest of the series. Ready? And we know that God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. We're going to learn how to do it. It's probably the most practical series we will do all year long. Because why? Because I know we're all tempted. And I know we're all, we are all sinners. And we're all saved by his grace and we're all forgiven by his blood. Can I get an amen right there, right? Yeah. But, but what I am finding as your pastor is that we're living with so much of the consequences of biting into the bait with a hook that we're missing the life that Christ died for us right here. No, this isn't our home. No, this isn't our home. I know that. But the truth of the scripture is that I just didn't come to die. I came to set you free. I, I just didn't die to have to give you life. I came to give you life and life more abundantly. You see, because what happens is, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can be the one that got away. So that you can be the one that got away. The pattern is the same. That's desire, doubt, Deception. I don't know why it came out like an alliteration. I apologize for that. It's kind of corny. But here, desire, doubt, deception, detour. Desire, 
doubt, deception, detour. Every time I do something I wasn't created to do, I wasn't created to say, I fell, I fall into believing a lie. No matter what I say, oh, well, they deserved it. They made me. Desire, doubt, deception, detour. Yet, God says, everything you're going through, I've been through it. I know the hurt, I know the joy, I know the pain, and I know the pleasure. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to learn how to be the one that got away. Amen? Amen. Bow your heads, let me pray for you. Thank you, Lord, so much for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we get to hear your voice through your word each and every day. Lord, this week, let us see the pattern when we go to work. This week, Lord, let us see the pattern in what we say and what we post and how we behave. Let us see the pattern, Lord. Lord, make us strong through your spirit. Make us wise through your love. Lord, teach us today and every day how to pass the bait, how to pass by the bait, how to not be hooked, to live the life that you died for. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you guys. Come on, let's stand together. Man, what a wait, what a service. Listen, as you leave, the prayer team is up front for anything at all that you need to be prayed for in your life. Hug somebody you don't know for an awkwardly long time. I love you. See you next week. Thank you for joining us for service today. We love that we get to serve you and your family. If you would like to continue your worship experience through giving, we have three simple, quick, and secure ways for you to do so. First, you can use text to give Simply compose a text message with the keyword thechapel.cc, followed by your gift amount to 77977. Hit send and follow the prompts. Or visit our website, thechapel.cc slash give, and complete your giving online. Finally, you can always mail in your giving to the chapel at 1324 Seven Springs Boulevard, suite number 363, Newport Ritchie, Florida, 34655. Thank you for your continued generosity. We could not and would not want to do this without you.